Okay, recording now. First and foremost, I'd like, oh. like to thank you, Ruth, founder of Deep, Art Deep Skin, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to interview with the Dabby magazine. Uh, talk me through your background. Thanks, My talk background. Me your background. How far would you like me to go? Uh, as far as as far as um, right from your youth to the the current point, as far as as far as you want. Really. My youth. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I studied. I think I'll start from adulthood. <laughs> Um, so I studied um, uh, oil, gas and energy management for, uh, for my bachelor's um, degree, graduated. I studied that at Coventry University, graduated the first class and an award. Um, it, was not, it was never really my passion to study that. Um, mm -hmm. However, circumstances had it that that's the, the path I went down. Then I also went into doing a master's in petroleum engineering. And so I started working, like from my bachelor's, I started working with an industrial gas company doing a graduate scheme. Um, however, my interest has always been everything skincare. And one time when I was around 20 years old, my skin absolutely turned on me. Like my skin was absolutely terrible. Like I didn't even want, it was so bad. Like when people see pictures today, they're like, is this Photoshop? Like we actually can't <laughs> believe that that is, that could be your yeah. skin. Um, and so because of that, I spent a lot of time and money trying to research into products and things that I, that can help my skin change. A lot of them didn't work. Hundreds of, I had literally hundreds of products that I tried and nothing worked. Um, and finally, I did find, find a solution. So when I did find a solution, um, I started trying to help other people. I wanted to help other people that were in the same situation as me. Um, and my closest friends encouraged me to, to start something official. Uh, at first, I was a bit skeptical because I never really had the entrepreneurship mindset. I just always thought, why be an entrepreneur when you can just get your degree and work in an office and mm -hmm. work your way up? Um, but after just a few years of working in an office, I realized it's, it's really not something I feel like I should be doing for the next 30 plus years. It didn't seem attractive to me at all. Um, so I decided to, to start our deep skin or I can personally educate, um, people with deep skin tones about how to look after their skin in a healthy way. So that's when it started in March and yeah i started with online consultations and now moving on to a huge project which we'll probably talk about later yeah i can see you got your skin is the melanin is coming through i can see this is something's working there thank you yeah. and just uh, ironically uh, a spot came this through this morning on my cheek so i'm just like does it have to come today but anyway <laughs> it's life yeah so that be uh, what inspired you to create uh, our deep skin? What inspired me was mostly the um, because of the struggles that I went through with my with my own skin. Mm -hmm. I felt that it shouldn't have been that hard um, to find products that work on my skin. A lot of the products I tried burnt my skin. I damaged my skin even more because the products that were created for my skin, um, created that I tried, were not actually created with people with this kind of skin in mind. So there are different types of, um, you know, shades of, of 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 skin. Some with more melanin than others, mm -hmm. and products work differently in different types of skin. And what works on one type may like burn another. Or may not look good on another or just may exacerbate a, a, a problem that's already there so i i just decided that I, I saw that it was an area that really needed um more representation with people that looked like me because even though i did find a solution for my skin i recognized um it just it just one day when i was scrolling through social media um i followed a lot of skincare people, dermatologists, estheticians, and it, it just penny dropped and I was like, hold up, 
none of the people that I follow look like me. None of the people that I've been taking advice from um, have, have been like mine. And even though they've given me amazing advice and some of the things that they've said have actually helped me. Uh, in 2020, I'm living now. I believe representation is, is so important more than ever. And I think every single industry and space um, in, yeah, whatever industry it is, needs to have someone that anyone can relate to. So I wanted to be that that person for, for the skincare community. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And with that, is, um, are you focusing just on UK or... Like London, UK, and or you want to become global. So um, I've I've currently only well not actually I mainly um, cons- uh, do skin I do online skincare consultations currently mm-hmm. uh, mainly with people in the UK, but there are also a few people that have um, that I've cons- um, have been my clients from overseas about two. And that's mainly from different IG lives that I've, I've done with, with different um, skincare people and they, their followers have followed me and then mm. they've come um, to ask me for help for something. And so I've, I've been able to help them and give them their own personalized um, skincare regimens. But um, the goal in the future for Our Deep Skin with the, with the project that we're going to launch for it to be worldwide Oh great! We're going to we're going international. <laughs> going international. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. But what makes you different from other similar African wellness and beauty brands? What's your USB? How do you stand out from the rest? Um, I think my main difference uh, will be first of all the the the, the offer that we're going to um, be launching. I don't know if you want me to talk about that now. Uh, yeah, if it, if it's something that's, that makes you stand out, then yeah, for sure. All right, okay. So um, I can say this now because it was kind of finalized over the weekend and put out put out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're start we're we're going to launch a, a skincare subscription box for people with deep skin tones. So every month, um, people that have so probably people don't know the meaning of deep skin tones in like the medical world. There's this thing called the Fitzpatrick scale where there's like a, a, a scaling system of, of, of skin types from number one to number six. So we're entering type four to type four to six. So um, we're going to be providing every single month, five full size products to the people that subscribe. So it will be like a cleanser, a toner, a moisturizer, a serum, and a sunscreen every single month. So, and these products, what's going to make them different is that they will have been um, clinically proven um, by lab scientists and dermatologists to have to, to work on on deep skin tones. Um, so, we're going to be collaborating with um, a lot of brands uh, to to incentivize them almost to make inclusive products that also cater to to all kinds of skin tones so that they can be featured in the box and so that people can find out more about their brand so it's kind of a win-win situation so what makes me what makes our deep skin different mostly I think is that there is no other service like this currently worldwide in my in my research there are subscription boxes for um like makeup and there are like you know you get an eye mask here or face mask there and a lipstick or something but an actual um step-by-step skincare routine that someone can get every month with full instructions backed by skincare consultants like myself and dermatologists that doesn't currently exist and so we're really excited that we're really going to kind of disrupt the beauty industry and just make skincare simple for anyone that has any kind of problem and each box will be um, curated to the specific needs of, of that individual. So that's something that we're, that's coming soon and it's really exciting. Yeah, I can't wait to hear about that in the fu- uh, near future. I can't wait to hear it in the next co- coming months. I can't wait to hear more about that one. Thank you. Yeah. And, we um, actually um, pitched this idea this weekend um, to uh, a panel of four investors out of uh, oh, wow. like 10 other pitch like 10 other um startups 
yeah. and our our pitch actually won. So we have a little bit of um, money that has come in to to inject into the business, which yeah. is really exciting. And we're just hoping we're trying to just put ourselves out there so that we can get more financial help to be able to get this idea realized. So that was a real encouragement and a boost that you know when 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 we did when you showed the pitch deck to the investors and we pitched like. 10 most like 10 times over the weekend it was quite tiring um it was virtual it was on it was on a zoom conference for for startups and um yeah for someone that has a lot of experience in startups to tell you that your idea is very viable that's very encouraging so congratulations yeah congratulations on on that thank you thanks growing up uh go back to a young roof was there anything else you wanted to be was this always the end goal no uh growing up i wanted to be a doctor oh it's, uh, standard boring answer standard, standard <laughs> yeah African. growing up i wanted to be a doctor yeah, yeah standard answer mm-hmm. um but I, I genuinely i genuinely did but yeah life didn't go that way so so from what age did you want to be a doctor? How old were you when you decided, oh, doctor, to be a doctor is something I really want to be? I don't think I can remember the age that I said I wanted to be a doctor. Um, but I was always, I always had as more science mind than the arts. Like I never, I couldn't stand arts at all in school. Yeah. They were my worst subjects, history, geography. I, to be honest, I thought they were all quite a waste of time. Yeah. <laughs> and so I only ever like focused on the sciences. Even when I went to A level, I only studied biology, chemistry, math. And yeah, I've just always done scientific stuff. So yeah, I don't I don't remember the age though that is, that I said that I want to be a doctor. So. All right. And then when did that change that you wanted? Um... So you started, you did your university in oil and petroleum, oil and gas. When did you have made that decision that you wanted to, you know, start your own business? And when did that come about? To start my own business? Yeah. Or to focus on um, black skincare or skincare for the black skin, skincare, you know, routine. So that started um, predominantly in March. Uh-huh. So I had a little bit of a rough uh, year last year in just in just personally. And then towards the end of last year, the company that I work for sent me out on a, a big project. So I was working in France, the south of France for for about three months yeah. or just over three months um, doing some project engineering in, in Lyon. So even though I was excited at first to take on the to take on the job, you know, travel abroad and work in a new office, it was a super lovely high tech office. You know, everything's on like massive screens, and um, it was a bit lonely, and it was very, um, very, it was it was very tough to just move to a new place, live in a place by yourself, go to an office, every language. Um, so I think it took quite a big toll on my mental health Mm -hmm. and as a result of that, even though I did enjoy the role, um, when I did come back to the UK in February, um, I think I was still a bit, "Mm, I don't know if I want to do this for the rest of my life. And so I started thinking, what are, what are things I enjoy? Um, I've always enjoyed skincare a bit of a skincare junkie. I buy every single product, <laughs> even though like I found a solution to my skin. I think the habit remained of keep trying to see the next best thing and to buy it and purchase it and read yeah. reviews and stuff like that. So all my friends knew me for that. And all my friends would come to me for advice and they would always come to my house to see excess products I have and they'll take some in their bags when they're going away because I would not I would not notice if they if they took anything or not really. Um, yeah. and so they kept encouraging me like Ruth you should start your own thing, Ruth you should start your own thing. I was like, nah, I'm gonna just climb up in the company I'm working for, you know, one day I'll be like a top manager of somewhere and yeah. I'll be comfortable in a stable job. Um, but because of the experience that I had previously, 
I decided, you know what, I think this is not something I'm willing to stay in. It's not an industry I'm willing to stay because it's a very male dominated industry. Um, you know, middle aged people probably around my father's age, um, a different demographic than me. So it's, I just felt very out of, out of place. And I thought, you know what, I'm not going to stay in this industry and fight my way up almost when I can just do something I'm passionate about. And I think what kind of um, made that even more solid in my head is just the, sh the, the sheer amount of people right now that are starting their own thing. You know, on social media, there's so many entrepreneurs yes. now, so many, you know, do it yourself kind of people, so many ads, you know, I've got my own course over here. Here's how I can help you join my email list. There's a lot of that kind of thing, you know, go from zero to a million in like yeah. how many days, whether or not they're like <laughs> genuine or not. Um, every, everyone can clearly see that the entrepreneurship has really boomed. And I was like, you know what, if others can do it, I can do it too. I mean, I've never struggled in school with academics. So I was like, why can't I do this as well? And why can't I just live um, a life more or less on my own terms, being able to help others with something I'm passionate about? Yeah. So I thought, why not? Let me set up a website. Yeah. Let me start a, um, an Instagram. Let me talk to people. And then I got a business mentor um, who taught me <laughs> how to actually price my things and not to do things for free. So she helped me set up a consultation service and she's been helping me set up a couple of other info products that I'll be going, um, selling within the next month. And yeah, it just kicked off from there. Once I started, I couldn't stop. And then after that, I was like, you know what, let's make this bigger. Um, consultation is one-to-one. -one. How can I help every single person out there that may have a problem? And then that's when, I thought of the subscription box and then, yeah, I found this great opportunity, pitched it, found a co-founder who liked the idea and now we're going to set up. Yeah, wow, amazing. I love it when um, plans come to fruition, when it, the, the concept to reality, when you first, you know, lay down the, the, the foundations, the early bits, and then from that ideation to creation, that the content, you execute the plan. And it goes like that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And with that, because you were talking about um, funding and how you, to not uh, pay for, get things for free, or whatever, to get paid for everything. How, uh, tell me about some of the early challenges you faced while starting up. I think the main challenges were something I didn't realize before content creation actually takes a lot out of a person it's like a full it is a full-time job mm -hmm. so you know when you when you don't have a startup or you're not a business owner or anything and you're for example on Instagram is the main one yeah scrolling through and you see all these like amazing I don't know whatever page you follow whether it's food or fashion or you know, celebrity or and something and they have like information that they give out, you know, how to do this, how to do that. Or we don't realize how long it took that person to put that information together for you or to make a video or to, um, even if it's a simple picture, how long it took them to actually take it and edit it and write a caption that can help you and benefit you. So I took that for granted and I thought, you know what, I love skincare and I know a lot about it. I'm just going to start an Instagram page and just write. Um, and every day doing that, you know, waking up early, putting out, I wanted my aim was to do three posts a day and to put out quality information. I didn't, I didn't just want to put out, you know, any old thing to put out quality information. I found that it was almost like a full-time job and I was like, hold up, I'm on furlough and yet I'm still working like this and I'm not getting anything from it. You know, people yeah. that are, are, are on furlough, like you, you get less salary. Um, I'm not getting anything from it. I was like, is this how it, it's supposed to be? Because it seems everyone else is giving out free stuff on the internet, you know, free ebook, just put your email here, or free webinar or free. And you know, what? Um, for a while I'd been following this lady called Nicole Walters and she's um, a business strategist for Fortune 500 companies um, in America. So I really admired her and she had a course that she does every single year called 1K One Day where she helps you to grow your business idea from nothing to like something like amazing. 
Um, so she opened it up during the pandemic and I was like, you know what, let me join this. And I joined it and we did a lot of one-on-one -on -one with her. Like she's helped me so much. Um, just had a, co a call with her last night as well. And she, her motto is we don't do free. It doesn't matter what everyone else is doing. It doesn't matter if the influencers are giving out free every day. Um, I have worked in corporate America and that's not how things work. If you want to have a sustainable business, it's not about giving out everything free. And it may seem that everyone else is doing it, but you don't have to be everyone else. And even if, you know, someone's got a million something followers, I mean, there was a story, not recently, it was quite a while back of, of an influencer who had, I don't know, like 3 million or something plus, I forgot the figures. Um, and she started a clothing line and she failed to sell 10 t-shirts, um, but she had a, a large following. But it's because people were so um, used to getting free from her all the time. When she did launch something, it's like, why should I pay her? Because when you, when you um, teach people to get used to getting free from you all the time, um, that's what they're going to put in their mind. And you know what? I was like, you know what? If I want this to be my full-time job, uh, I'm not here to collect followers. I'm here to give value for people who need it. And if people need something, they'll pay for it. So um, I focused on scaling down the amount of, of posts I do a day, working with a, an actual business mentor to help me plan my strategy, to help me know how to provide value, how to do consultation, how to price my products, um, how to market and get, and get clients. And that definitely helped me um, just change mindset and, and not feel like I'm doing something wrong because everyone else is giving out free stuff. Um, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so, I guess early challenges is really funding. The usual things that entrepreneurs face, funding, getting funding. Yeah. Funding, yet yeah, like the, a, a lot of work is a lot of a lot of work is being taken out from you yeah. for producing things that will um, keep people interested in your brand. Yet you're not being paid for it. Yet you have high, like bigger ambitions to grow and scale your business. Um, and yeah, just and the motivation each day to wake up, even if you love something, just to wake up each day and keep doing it and not switch to another thing. Because I think a lot of people that are entrepreneurs or, you know, are multi-potentialites and we have so many ideas. Like I've, I've, I have I've had so many ideas of business I want to start. I'm just like, I don't want to be like another serial entrepreneur, but it's just like, you just have so many, so many ideas. But yeah, I think those are the main challenges. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine it's, it's, it's so many ideas, but to focus on one fully and put all your energies into that one, Mm. yeah I mean yeah one thing at a time is always the best and especially if you're starting up because I've not done anything like this before it's best for me to focus on one thing see the downfall see what I've done well and see how to improve on that so that if I do want to launch something else I now know how to do it properly and to avoid the same the same hurdles I can into. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, hundred percent. Okay, I'm gonna take things back a bit and go off on this tangent. But something that talk about something that's been trending quite recently, which is Black Lives Matter, and all the police brutality in, against blacks in America. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, it's a big one. It's a shame that um, this awareness had to come from the loss of multiple people's lives however i think it couldn't have come at a better time when people were you know we're in the whole world is in a pandemic everyone's stuck at home people are tired of being at home people are a bit restless and then bam this happens mm. people are like you know you know we're already tired being at home um we may have kept silent in the past about the many injustices especially that people that look for example, like myself, have, are facing since birth. Um, however, I think the uproar worldwide was definitely worth it. And I'm grateful for it because it has brought a lot of awareness. Obviously, there will always be a couple of individuals that refuse to understand uh, where 
people are coming from and the hurt that people have had for generations. However, the majority, which is, I think it's always best to focus on the positives and the majority, majority of people have actually um, realized that, wow, like maybe we've had it good for a long time. There are systematic, you know, systems of racism and injustice um, for other races and genders. So yeah, I think it came at a good time and I'm just hoping that the, mem the momentum keeps going even though things have started um, going down a little bit. And I'm just hoping, um, you know, one of the reasons I actually even wanted to, to do the, the subscription box was there was from, from the, the, the events that happened, there were so many pledges and um, yeah, pledges from companies and brands to be more inclusive and diverse. And I think the, the subscription box service by Our Deep Skin will give brands an opportunity to actually, to work on those pledges. Because if you, if you say you are uh, inclusive and diverse, you know, the skincare industry is like an $8 billion industry, yet people of color are still finding it hard to find products that cater to them. Um, so go to the labs with your scientists and your dermatologists, create products with us in mind um, and show us that you have them, show us that you actually care about us. So, um, so yeah, I think it's something that I'm, I'm excited about to see if they'll actually do it. And yeah, I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm hopeful for the months and years to come that there will actually be a significant change in the way things are run worldwide. Yeah, for sure. The narrative can change, will change, as long as we, I think we have to have honestly, honest discussions between us, blacks, blacks and whites, have honest discussions about uh, Black Lives Matter, about how we can move forward, how we can be more uh, inclusive. More inclusive. Mm -hmm, definitely. And I found as well, like for startups, you know, the, the statistics were actually really shocking when you look at um, the amount of um, venture capitalists and investment um, investors that actually invest in startups that are founded by people of colour, um, especially women. So a lot of those companies as well have pledged and stuff like that. So I think it's, even though the circumstances that led to this were very negative, I think now is the time more than ever for anyone out there, any young person out there with an idea to work on it, work hard and put it out there because now there are going to be a lot of companies and things that are going to be supporting people of colour. And so myself personally, I'm looking out a lot for these opportunities, any kind of grants and stuff that you see apply for them because, um, you know, it could be that now is our chance, you know, before, you know, before the fire and the smoke dies down and they forget about us again. Um, yeah, make the most of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, back to your business. <laughs> uh, what is, this may be tricky for you, but what is your single most favorite moment during your time as CEO? Single most favorite moment. Mm. Okay, there have been a couple. If you can narrow it down to okay. one. One. Yeah. Okay, I'll say the first one was seeing my website come to life. Um, even though it's uh, still, you know, it's not the best website out there, but just seeing an idea that you've had um, being put to paper, worked on, branding being done, logos being done, and it being up there. I mean, that was my first ever website. Um, I now have another one, but it was just exciting to see, you know, that, oh, this is my thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I made this and I put my effort into this. So, yeah, I think that was, that was fun. That was fun to see. Yeah, it was always, you get that adrenaline, that, that buzz, isn't it? You make create your own. Yeah, like something's actually coming to life. So. Coming to life, yeah. I'd, from the idea to creation, this is it now. You made a step. Uh, where and okay, amazing, amazing stuff. And where do you see yourself in the next 
five years? Our next five years. The hope and my aim though where I'm gonna see myself in the next five years is to be obviously the founder of hopefully the world's largest skincare subscription box for for deep skin tones. Mm -hmm. I want to be someone that encourages um, other young people to to achieve their dreams. I am hoping one day to be able to write a book about about my business, but also just about my life. Because I think I've had quite a lot of um, lessons taught to me quite early. So I think I have a lot to share with her. However, because of various things um, that, that, that happened, I kind of lost a lot of my um, hobbies and passions so I kind of want to just work on those again and to start writing again, inspiring others, um, being a being a great mo be, being a great role model to people. Oh, amazing! And with um, our deep skin, would you do you plan to have a boutique and uh, an or maybe an online store, or a physical store where you, people can go and buy skincare products? Do you know what? Um, I've had a dream about this, <laughs> and obviously this is this is probably I don't know if this is five years ago. Anyway, let me not you know shut down my blessings. Um, if I, I've had a dream that one day I want to also have like a massive store that is split into five sections, like very simple. This is where you get your cleansers. This is where you get your your moisturizers this is where you get your sunscreens all of them have been clinically proven to work on deep skin tones and i wanted to launch one in the uk somewhere and one in uganda as well only because i have a lot of subscribers from or from uganda and they ask me to help them with their skin but i don't know where to direct them for them to buy those kind of reputable products so because um obviously originally in my blood that uh, there is ugandan in me I want to do something for them and set up a huge boutique there with all reputable brands, just like the one, like the sister one in the UK, so that they can, so that people that 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 can um, that want to have good skincare routines can actually have um, a boutique they can they can buy that at, and hopefully worldwide they, those can be there as well. So yeah. I don't know it's it's a, it's, a, it's a dream, it's a dream, but yeah, right now I'll I'll, I'll focus on one thing. One thing, but with that end goal of going international, going global, and really making waves out there in the industry. Yeah, in the industry. yeah. The main thing is to help to help people because I, I I found that when I was analyzed the reason why I may not want to work in an office job for the rest of my life, uh -huh. um, I also noticed that many times at the end of the day when I would go home, I would feel like I haven't really done anything. Like I, I feel like I've, I've worked on projects, I've, I've done emails, I've sent spreadsheets, but I don't feel like I've fulfilled any purpose for the day. I feel like I'm fulfilling someone else's dream, you know, to deliver gas around the country. But when I help people, like when I've come off a consultation, or even if it's just as simple as someone asks a question in the comments and I answered it, I just feel so happy. And when people, when I've helped someone and then they send me a picture of their skin, like a few months down the line or a few weeks later, that, oh my gosh, my skin started to clear up, you know, like my acne is gone now. I just feel like, I feel like I've accomplished something myself. And that feeling, once I got that feeling, I was like, yeah, there's no going back. I, I just want this feeling to keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And for, for those amazing stuff, and for those who uh, may want to take the plunge to, to start their own entrepreneurial adventure, but they, they've got doubts, they're hesitant, they don't know where to start, they don't know where to go or when to, when to do it. What would you say to them? What advice have you got for those guys? A bit cliche, but cliches are there for a reason. Mm -hmm. Know your why. <laughs> um, just know know why you want to be an entrepreneur. Because um, even though I haven't um, been one for long, uh, what I do what I do do a lot, and this is another piece of advice I would give them, is read a lot of books from other people that have um, 
being entrepreneurs in the past, listen to audio books, um, and a running theme in those books and audio books is that it's so easy to give up if you don't know why you're doing what you're doing. There are going to be days when you have losses. There are going to be days when you launch something and you expected a hundred people to sign and jump onto it and you get three people, you know, your sister, your aunt and your dog, you know, mm -hmm. and you might be disappointed and stuff like that. But when you, when you know that, you know what, like what I said before, my, one of my whys is to know that I've helped someone um, with their skin, something that really affected me and knowing that that's lifted their day. They have more self-worth now, more self-esteem because they look better. That keeps me going because I know that. And even if I have a bad day, a bad launch, you know, a pandemic hits and I can't do what I wanted to do anymore, that will just keep me going. And know, you know what, Ruth? Um, this may not have worked out, but the world still needs your help in this area and I'm going to keep on, keep on going. So I'd say don't doubt yourself. Find out what you love to do the most. Find out where you can help in the world. Um, and yeah, just go for it. Love that. Wisdom. Absolute wisdom. Lovely advice. Lovely advice. For, for right there. You've heard it. For you guys, entrepreneurs, bottom entrepreneurs, you've heard it. The tea has been spilled. Excuse me, so if you if you guys listening, that's your there's your wisdom, there's your words of wisdom. Just go, don't wait, just start the business, build your website and go. And don't ever wait for something to be perfect. No, I mean no perfect time. I, I could have launched my website once launch i kept thinking oh it doesn't look right here it doesn't right there it doesn't you know what even if you've just got a one-page blog just start writing 30 minutes each day put 30 minutes at least into your business each day to, to make some piece of progress even if it's just listening to something that may help you writing yeah. one paragraph anything just get into the habits of being a, a good ceo a good ceo always does something every day for towards the progress of their business so yeah consistency is key yeah Yes. Major key, major key. Got that, guys. <laughs> and finally, at the Davi magazine, we love to ask our guests, if you had an opportunity to speak with your old self, what would you say and why? Ooh. Go back to the young um, group again. I know. <laughs> As you can probably tell, I don't really like thinking about the young group, but um, <laughs> what I would say to her, wow. Oh, it's a bit emotional. I'll tell her that, you know what, just life is going to get better and there is so much value you're going to bring to this world. Um, so just don't let anything bring you down. Don't let any circumstances or anything bring you down. People are going to absolutely love you and, and be, be happy with the service that you provide them. Um, in the future so just keep on doing it joy comes in the morning amen love that <laughs> love that yeah and with that uh, thank you very much for taking the time out of your business because just interview with the davi magazine thanks for having me